afternoon. My name is John Paul Ferrer. I am the current president of the Illinois International Society of Filipinos in Finance and Accounting. With me today is Ruben Salazar, who is the executive director of the Philippine American Cultural Foundation. So why don't we take a little bit of a moment and, and kind of introduce uh, Ruben Salazar, who, by the way, from time to time, uh, most likely all the time, I'll call him Tito Ruben. He's well known in the Filipino community, and we all call him Tito Ruben, which uh, it translates to Uncle Ruben. Tito Ruben? Hello. Uh, we're here to promote uh, Filipino American History Month. Every October, we celebrate Filipino American History Month uh, since 2011, when the resolution was approved from Congress, Resolution 780, declaring October as Filipino American History Month to celebrate the history and culture of Filipino Americans. And Tito Ruben, a little known fact in the community or the, here in the United States, the earliest Filipinos actually landed in Morro Bay, San Francisco, by San Francisco. Uh, what year was that? That was in 1587. So the Filipinos actually have arrived in the U.S long before Columbus discovered America. Wow, and the first settlement in the U.S.? That is in New Orleans, Louisiana. So uh, they uh, went to the fishing village in Louisiana. So every year we do celebrate the Filipino American History Month in the month of October. And uh, this year the, the theme that we're actually celebrating is? We're celebrating Pinay visionaries Filipino-American women. It's about time for us to honor our women who are the backbone of the Filipino-American community. Great, so why don't we actually recognize each of the awardees and go through them and uh, talk to them briefly because after you, we have two other guests that will talk about some of the other events during this month. Well, this year we're proud to honor three Filipino-Americans here in Chicago. First one being Australia Ravello Alomar. She's an all-American native born on the west side of Chicago. She is the founder of the Filipino American Historical Society of Chicago, and she's the one who co-authored the Arcadia publication, Filipinos in Chicago. Great, and the next person? The next person is Adeline Fajardo. She's currently the president of the Philippine American Cultural Foundation, and she is the late husband, or the, the wife of the late uh, Hoven Fajardo, who is the first and only mayor, Filipino-American mayor in Illinois. And of course, there's the third one who is uh, very dear to my heart. Uh, so go ahead and introduce her. The third one is Veronica Layton. She is the sole founder, creator, publisher, editor, administrator, and manager of the longest running monthly film publication called Via Times, and also the sister broadcast outfit, Chicago Philippine Reports TV. And actually this year, she's celebrating the 25th anniversary of her awarding the Filipino Hall of Fame award. That's Gail. correct. That's in November 9, I believe. And uh, let's tell the audience uh, if, if uh, you've been awarded that for... Well, I'm proud to say that I'm one of the awardees, and I know that you also as one of the awardees. Yeah, Dan Paul. I've been awarded that as well. So as you can see, there's a lot happening in this month. And if you think about it, um, we got 31 days to celebrate the Filipino American history. So thank you, Tito Ruben. I know you have another event that you have to go to tonight. Uh, but what I'd like to do is go ahead and bring our next guest. Thank you, John Paul. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. So I'd actually uh, like to bring one of the co-authors of a book that you will you, that will be discussed tonight at the James Hall House, Jane Adams Hall House Museum at UIC. So Gail, Hi. welcome. Thank you. And I know that you're not originally from Chicago. You're just a visitor today. 
So why don't we uh, go ahead and introduce yourself first. My name is Gail Ramasanta and I co-wrote the book Journey for Justice, The Life of Larry Itleon with the late and great historian Dr. Don Mabalon, illustrated by uh, illustrator and artist extraordinaire Andre Sabayan. So the, I read the book and it's absolutely the history, and we'll talk about this, of Larry Itliong and his struggles during the early years of migration here in the United States. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of us have a story coming from the Philippines. Were you born here? I was born in the Philippines. You were born and then you moved here. Mm -hmm. uh, how long ago was that? When I was two years old. Wow. A long time ago. So, <laughs> I was actually, uh, I was born in the Philippines, uh -huh. moved here in 1988. Uh -huh. So we did the, uh, the whole, I got petitioned through the uh -huh. United States and we waited 12 years. So I was 13 when we moved here in 1988. So mm -hmm. for as long as I have remembered things, it was all about in preparation to coming here. Um, the idea was that coming to the United States, the, the greatest country in the planet, will ensure us to working hard, but yet experiencing the wealthiest nation in the world. Mm -hmm. And in reading the book, that kind of kind of resonated to me, but he's got a little bit of a different journey. So why don't you talk about that a little bit? So it really is, it, at, at the base of it, it really is an immigration story, and it's very much similar, at least to mine, and it sounds like to yours also, about what, Filipi what Filipinos go through and maybe other ethnicities go through, or all ethnicities, actually. No, one's, no one in the United States is actually native here unless you're Native American. We're all immigrants. And so this is about Larry Itliong's journey when he argues with his father. He wants to come to the United States, and his um, father says, no, you can't go. And he says, I'm going to get there anyway. So he gets on a ship, the Empress of Asia, and he comes here to Seattle first and then travels throughout the West Coast as a migrant farm labor. Um, and so it really is his story about how he had really wanted to become a lawyer. He wanted to become an attorney to fight for the rights of the poor, but he wasn't able to do that because uh, he had to work and he had to pay for his life here. But then also there was such intense and violent racism and brutality against Filipinos at that time that he just really was not able to get out and go to school but he became a union organizer and he um, organized throughout the country um, I mean excuse me not throughout the country throughout the West Coast and by the time we see him during the Delano grape strike of 1965 uh, through 1970 uh, he's already been organizing Filipino workers to begin unions to start unions um, and organizations throughout the West Coast he's already been doing that for 30 years by the time we see him at the Delano grape strike moment and he is he when the Filipinos in 1965 decided and voted to go on strike and not go back to work on the grape fields picking the grapes. Uh, he called Cesar Chavez. So Cesar Chavez, everyone knows who Cesar Chavez is. He started the UFW and was part of the Delano grape strike. Well, the Filipinos started, actually started the Delano grape strike. Larry Itlion called Cesar Chavez and asked him if he could, uh, he and the Mexicans could come and be part of that grape strike. And so he and Dolores Huerta went back to their community and asked them if they would be able to be part of this strike and they weren't sure they weren't sure if they had the capacity it was a little scary times but they did eventually join the filipinos and within one year the united farm workers the ufw was formed with larry as um, co-founding the ufw with cesar chavez so if you think about it Right now we're celebrating the Filipino American History Month. Yes. But the the Hispanic uh, Independence uh, Month is from seven, uh, September 15th to right. October 15th. So there's that co that overlap. Exactly. And I find that ironic because in the early years the the Hispanic community and the Filipinos actually stood there for justice yes. and actually for the labor movement. Mm -hmm. So and this is actually what is very interesting about this book. So tell me, I know that uh, today after this, you, um, October 11th, you're going to go to UIC. Yes. But tomorrow you also have another presentation to kind of honor him. It's, yes, so we will be from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. We'll be at Seafood City at the Chicago Elston Market from 9 to 12. And we're going to have a Rondalia there. We're going to have theater there, Reader's Theater, um, and some refreshments. And then also after that, we will be from 1 to 4 at Chicago Public Library, the Budlong um, uh, 
Let's see, I, the Bud Long um, branch. Great. So I'll put it up again just so that people can take some time and, and realize where they can actually see you. So you're here today, you're uh, a Friday, and then you'll be here Saturday, October 12 as well, to kind of honor him and, and showcase the history of Larry Idleon. Yes. And maybe a little bit uh, known uh, activist, uh, Filipino activist. Exactly. And to also engage the community so that they accept that this is our American history. It's, a, it's as American as learning about the history of, you know, um, what was happening, the Constitution, the signing of the Constitution. This is American history, the signing of the contracts for when uh, the growers accepted um, the demands of the Filipino, Mexican, and other immigrant um, immigrant groups um, demands on their contracts. So yeah, you know what stood up in the, the, his entire story. I mm -hmm. mean, he great he did great things about organizing. But the one thing that I want to highlight is he came in here with an idea of what he will become. Yes, with the big thought of becoming a lawyer and actually sending money to the Philippines to help out the people in the Philippines and instead he changed people's lives here right here in the United States. He did. He might not have impacted people as a lawyer but he was a great advocate in organizing a lot of people and of course forming a team with Cesar Chavez. Yes and so he was able to do that despite the struggles and he, he was able to make significant change in one of the most well-known social justice movements in American history. Right I mean so a lot of people, if you read the book and learn about it with their presentation, uh, I believe that you will actually find that, that you have a lot in common with the story he shared. Right, exactly. And so we will be showing videos, an introduction into who Larry Ileong was, and an introduction into Dr. Don Mabalon, who's the researcher behind this book. She uh, she researched this book for over 20 years, or the life of Larry Ileong. I actually went to Detroit at Wayne State University to take a look at Larry Ileong's files there at the UFW archives, and he did also send money back home to his province to the elementary school. Wow. And so he was just an activist on, on all in the Philippines here, and sending money back home and so I'm just very grateful that Dr. Don Mabalon researched him because this is the first book about Larry Ileong. Wow amazing so thank you again for uh, gracing us with your presence. Thank you. I really appreciate it thank and you for uh, good me. luck tonight and have fun. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and switch to another event that's happening uh, this month. I said in the early telecast that I am the current president of the International Society of Filipinos in Finance and Accounting. So today we have Maria Fides Balita. She is the founder of what how we call it is ISFA. So uh, Maria, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and explain about uh, ISFA? Yes, thank you so much, JB, for having me here. Um, as JB said, the ISFA is the International Society of Filipinos in Finance and Accounting. It is actually based in Los Angeles, but we have a chapter here in Chicago, and I was the founding president way back in 2012. So it has been in existence for seven years now. And the main programs of ISFA are leadership, mentoring, community service, and a scholarship. And <clears throat> Our primary goal is to assist, educate, train, and mentor emerging professionals. So those are um, the mission, and then the vision, of course, is to help the Filipinos and non-Filipinos, basically not only in, in the finance and in the accounting industry, but those who support and believe in our mission. So you are launching... We are we launched uh, a pretty good uh, event here for this uh, year in the uh, Filipino American History Month. So why don't we talk about that a little bit? Yes. So the Filipino uh, Restaurant Week. This is a concept that is really big in the East Coast. Actually, there are other cities here in the United States that um, that ha that has this program, which is the Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Washington D.C. Um, but the Philippine Consulate General of Chicago wanted to put that program here in in Chicago to promote the Filipino cuisine the Filipino culture through the food that we have and so they reached they needed an organization to help launch that project and they reached out to the to International us. Society <laughs> of Filipino Accounting which is like which is kind of like unique right we're entrepreneurs right. and at the same time 
food enthusiasts. <laughs> yeah, I think a, a lot of people get brought together through food. I remember being little in the Philippines. Every Sunday, we would bring our grandparents to our house, and my mom and my grandma would cook, and then uh, we would have lunch together, and they'll take a nap, and then I'll, try, I'll take them back to their home. So definitely something that uh, brings us together. I know the, the opening ceremony, ceremony happened this past uh, Sunday. Sunday. So we have a video to kind of show the audience of how that looked like, because mm -hmm. this is the first ever so as the year goes by we see this becoming a yearly tradition so it's important that we show you that So how was that? Oh, that was so much fun. We had a lot of people attend that event, and it was really amazing how people are very excited. This is their first time not only to participate in this Filipino first ever uh, Chicago Filipino Restaurant Week, but there is really a lot of excitement honoring the Filipino community, honoring the Filipino cuisine, and being basically just proud as Filipinos. Great. So in the next uh, slide, actually, I'm going to you some of the food that mm. we've taken a picture of yes. any of these your favorite my favorite is halo halo it's right there towards so the one, left yeah, yes you can see the cursor <laughs> that is actually a dessert it's a filipino dessert isn't it yes so talk a little bit about what you like about that because <laughs> i'm sure in the next few minutes we're going to have a craving <laughs> for it yes it's like a mix we call it like a halo halo it means in english it's like mix of all things it's like when you but take a joke, it's like a mix mix, okay? Right. But it's a mix of all the fruits, and it's almost like gathering together of all the f good stuff, and then combine it with a little ice, and a little milk, and some more ube, or the purple yam, which is even my more favorite, and some ice cream. It is my favorite. Isn't it rumored that you've <laughs> never tried that, and you try it for the first time, you get negative 1,000 calories? Yes. So yes. you're actually going to lose weight if you try it? Uh, let, let me play some videos, actually, of some of the restaurants preparing the food itself. Yeah. That's called the seasick. That's Tyrone. They're made out of banana and some... That's the hollow hollow. This is peanut butter. Filipino inspired sushi. Some fried rice, garlic fried rice. This is pork belly. It's grilled. And of course, this is uh, along with some food. And I'll have to have some uh, exotic drinks, tropical drinks. First ingredients for the pancet. Yes, sorry. I wasn't playing the video on the screen. <laughs> Green onions. There you go. There's the pork belly. So as you can see, there's a lot of depth to the Filipino food that a lot of diners have not discovered yet. Yes. So the idea of the Filipino Restaurant Week is to move our, the Filipino food movement to support it and actually bring it forward. Alright, so 
Filipino Restaurant Week. When does it? How long does it go through? It's it's uh, October sixth until October twenty first. And I also want to take this opportunity to invite everyone. There is going to be a culminating event on October. 27. It is at a restaurant in Bolingbrook. Uh, please check out the website. Just gonna adjust this. Okay, go ahead. Please check out uh, the our website, chicagoisfa.org. Uh, and look at the events tab and that will show the details on how and where the culminating event will be as well as the other details of like the restaurants that are participating. Great. Well, thank you, uh, Maria. Thank you for, uh, thank you for actually uh, coming in and being our guest this week. And of course, the, there's also a last event that we're going to advertise uh, that will be ending the Filipino American History Month. And it's a very hot topic right now the, uh, about the transgender story of a lady named Jenny. Uh, the film will be played on October 27th, uh, Sunday from 1 to 4 p.m. It is a free event happening at the Indian Prairie Public Library in Plainfield Road, uh, 401 Plainfield Road, Darren, Illinois. And uh, this is being sponsored by another group, Filipino American Association of South DuPage. And it's a story of a uh, transgender woman uh, and how she lived her life until, until a tragic end. So that culminates our Filipino American history update. Until next time, my name is John Paul Ferrer.